So you've had a long journey from uh, Fiji to being the CEO <laughs> of Watercare. Um, talk us through that journey as to um, why, why the water industry and what that journey means transitioning all the way from Fiji and come to New Zealand into the water sector as one of its key leaders. That's a very good question. Um, never thought about it. Oh. I think it's one of those journeys that you don't know what the destination is. Right. So you take the journey, things happen in your life. So I studied in New Zealand. I went back to Fiji and I was going to stay in Fiji. I love Fiji. Yeah, you know? who doesn't? Uh, yeah, exactly. And then there was a military coup. Yeah, and right. Was this in 2013? Uh, Give or take? 2000, no. Before then, Before the first then, yeah. military coup. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's such a long time ago that, you know. So when that happened, 2007, I, I think. Um, no, 1997. 97, yeah, yeah right. 97. Yeah, 97. Um, and so that led me back to New Zealand. And then when I got back to New Zealand, I said, oh, I better do masters. And you start looking at employment. And I was with council and I went to the IRA, the Auckland Regional Authority, Auckland Regional Council. I was with drainage, yep. you know, doing sewers and stormwater, and then joined water care. It came out of the Auckland Regional Council, and there was a drought. Uh, right. and, and the opportunity was to get into the water supply side, which yep. wasn't my, my background. Yep. It was more on drainage. But there was a lesson there. That do something that you haven't done before rather than continue doing what you're good at. So you yeah because yeah. if you keep doing the same thing you're doing you get the same result exactly and there's yeah. more it's more exciting so one thing led to the other I guess my interest in management yeah came out of the fact that I did not like working for people who did not look after their people yeah and and so the answer to that was well <coughs> become the manager because otherwise you're going to be the person working for shitty managers, right? Yep. Um, and then that led me into what is called culture and behaviors and motivation and engagement. And that just told me that to, to change an organization means you've got to be at the head, which means you've got to aspire to get to being the general manager or one of the executives or being the chief executive. You know? So I guess... The journey wasn't, it didn't start with me saying, I want to be a chief executive one day. Right. I was very happy being a design engineer, you know, yep. designing things and building things. But circumstances led me into what is very similar as an engineer. We're still designing, but we're dealing with people. 100%. So yeah. we, we're designing purpose. systems and purpose. purpose. And, and we are growing people. Yeah. Uh, and strengthening people rather than strengthening buildings. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, you said, you know, you, you didn't want to work for shitty managers. Yeah. Define I still a, don't. I still don't. <laughs> Fair enough. In, from your perspective, define a shitty manager. Uh, there's lots of uh, attributes that they may have, one yeah. or more. <laughs> but it could be their ethics, the values that they have. Uh, the most common one is that they're controlling. Yeah. They want to tell you what to do. They constrain your innovative juices that's flowing. They constrain your contribution that you want to make. They constrain everything. They're constraining. So they turn us into people who just turn up to do the task, wait to be given the next task, and then go home. And for me, that's that's very boring. Uh, fair. I've I've had a manager like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all had managers like that, and some yeah. people thrive in that because yeah. their life becomes simple. Yeah, because because then they're performers. Then then yeah. all they do is they have a checklist and they that's yeah tick off the checklist. They want to go home, which, yeah. which is great for them, you know. Yeah, exactly. And then there are um, innovators who um, yeah. thrive on innovating, and yeah, and it does depend on everybody's personality and what what brings them joy at the end True. of the day as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they're leaders and they're followers. You yeah. can't be a leader if there's no followers, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. So, um, can we talk a little bit about your journey as um, being the CEO of Watercare? How has that experience been for you? Uh, well, I was CEO for six years. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed all my CEO roles. Yeah. Um, so I had three. 
My first CEO role was Manaka Ura. Yep. And then I was chief executive and managing director in Australia, mm -hmm. an irrigation company. And that's the one I enjoyed the most. Right. Um, and then, of course, I was with Watercare. Yeah. And that journey was exciting because I replaced Mark Ford. Yeah. Who had been running Watercare for 22 years. So he had created a culture that was a very different culture to the one that I wanted. Uh, and the first three years of Watercare um, as CEO was all around changing that culture, around safety, being customer-centric, being more commercial, uh, the behaviors of the, the organization, the individuals, um, stopping the paternalistic behaviors in the organization, telling people it was okay to make mistakes and, yep. and be open, be, you know, not be frightened yeah. to speak up, all those things. The second three years was all about taking water care beyond what it had been doing, you know, almost taking it global. We were not going to do work outside of New Zealand or Auckland. Watercare, yeah. um, but it was about the, the presence of water care among the water industry global leaders. So it became one of the global leading utilities yeah. uh, and recognized as a leading utilities of the world. Um, I became part of one of the global leaders, water leaders. Um, and we ended up acquiring businesses. We bought Lutra, which is right. a small consulting company. We ended up signing a contract to manage Waikato District Council's three waters. Yeah. Um, so these were things that were taking water care beyond Auckland. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting stuff and doing a strategic transformation program, uh, changing the IT, changing the business. There was... Opening up, that was the next phase, yeah. That's, that sounds really exciting, yeah. It must it have been a real fun time. It uh, was. In Watercare. 